Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Welcome to the Video Game Fight School channel. Thank you very much for tuning in. So I just wanted to go ahead and start this video by saying thank you so much for all of your participation in the videos. We're approaching 3000 subscribers. I really do appreciate all of your efforts and even you taking the time to watch these videos. So we're going to do a little in, uh, retrospective just because of some of the news that has come to light. I did not want to jump on the bandwagon and train of talking about how, you know, Microsoft had acquired Activision Blizzard because somehow I'm not really surprised and somehow it was a little surprising. And I'll mention my reasons and how that relates to Gotham Knights because there was a time when I was tracking Microsoft as to how much they actually could spend. So a while ago, we talked about kind of the potential, and this was kind of the rumors floating that Warner Brothers Games was kind of shopping around for a potential buyer, and Microsoft was one of the people probably taking a look. Eventually, we discovered that there was a merger with Discovery where Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment is now underneath another arm and some of the Warner Brothers properties are under the other arm in terms of AT&T and all of the others. Now, it could have been because of the money that Microsoft has just spent, 67 point something or whatever billion dollars, that this is possibly what they wanted to do. They wanted to buy some major development uh, you know, uh, studios and even in some cases, the publishers in order for them to be able to get the very best of their money that they brought in in around 2017. So let's kind of visit this because that kind of gives you a perspective as to how big this pot is that Microsoft is spending, especially in the acquisition of video game titles, because this so-called console war, I said in one of my videos in the past was already over a long time ago. So somewhere around 2017, I think there was a CNN article that talked about how the Trump administration had actually, you know, basically done something in terms of some kind of uh, weird shift in some tax laws to allow for companies that had money offshore to bring it into the country. I think with Congress and all of that, there was some sort of a reduction in the tax bill if you brought in money from outside the country in that window. Microsoft was one of the companies that brought in a lot of offshore money, and even with the reduced tax bill, they still paid tens of billions of dollars. So you could have taken the percentage at that point to see that about ten, tens of billions of dollars will probably have equated to, you know, triple digits or hundreds of billion dollars that they had brought in in that window. So even if Microsoft had brought in just a hundred billion dollars, there was still a lot of money to spend. Next thing you know, we get the announcement after that particular window that Game Pass was going to be for a dollar for a lot of PC players. I think it was probably for about three months or in some cases six months. That was kind of the you know basic um, introduction of Game Pass. Following that, there was the xCloud beta. This was actually a beta that everybody could sign up for to test out Microsoft's xCloud system, which is basically their game streaming service through the cloud on your phone or mobile devices. Now, one reason it wasn't so permeative around the entire gaming community was because Apple had somehow had some issues with the way the app ran because the app would have to run other apps that would then require permissions. But, you know, Phil Spencer kind of said something along the lines of Microsoft was working with Apple to kind of see things in place. Now that entire ecosystem is live through the Game Pass Ultimate, uh, you know, program. And, you know, anybody that has that subscription right now can play all kinds of games on there. I believe that's their shot to the bow at PS Now, where Microsoft took a lot of old games and even some new games and put them on PlayStation Now that people could basically play backward compatible if PlayStation was actually paying attention, but they weren't. So Microsoft got them there. And then Microsoft made Game Pass available, started bringing brand new games day one to Game Pass, and then acquired ZeniMax Studios, the parent company of Bethesda. So I go back and I say to myself, what if Microsoft had actually acquired Warner Brothers, uh, you know, interactive entertainment? I think, number one, it would have been some sort of a good deal because I believe strongly right now that Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment, in terms of the arms of the Batman games, are not necessarily leveraging how powerful this IP is. Instead, it seems to be there's a lot of maybe mismanagement going on, and perhaps things are probably not flowing in the way that it could because 
ex existing projects were canceled before Gotham Knights was actually announced, and nobody's even talking about a Superman game, but it appears to me that Phil Spencer, and even the way they're running the whole Xbox ecosystem right now, I think it speaks to the fact that this company has the ear of gamers. Now, let's not get it twisted. They might get to the point where they make a whole bunch of money and then everything kind of switches up on us, but we still have some competition on the PC space and even on Nintendo side and Sony side. But when it comes to that entire talk about the console war, it is right now over because Microsoft has positioned themselves in a way that they kind of saw gaming approaching and this is something that everybody you know probably we weren't paying attention to but now we are all paying attention to exactly what it is that is going on it's no longer a secret it's no longer something that's hiding and you know i think a lot of things that we have to come to terms with is a lot of these companies are making business moves that they feel are beneficial for them and one thing that we have to also understand is this competition really does have to happen whether you're on the playstation or whether you're on the you know xbox side it's something that's necessary because I think at some point, the competition has got to draw the market factors to exactly where it needs to be. We've we've actually talked about the potential of a Spider-Man game coming to PC. In fact, that video of mine, I didn't even know what happened. It just started to get maybe a little bit more eyes on it. And it's seeming more and more plausible that PlayStation might eventually decide to make that move. It's no longer really anymore about selling consoles in today's day and age. I think there's a lot more that's going into things now. It's now about selling your games and bringing your entertainment to different platforms that other gamers are able to enjoy, which kind of takes me back to the entire conversation about Gotham Knights. So Gotham Knights is in just this really weird conundrum. And I think everybody can agree with me that, you know, if this was the case where Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment had been acquired by Microsoft, we may have started seeing things work differently. In fact, just an announcement alone had a lot of the employees kind of asking what is our status and all of this stuff. But Microsoft seems to have shown in some case, uh, you know, that they kind of have the the concern in terms of gamers in their minds, like they're kind of looking at things from the gamer's perspective. But again, we need to see how all this fleshes out. The deal is not yet final. The deal is uh, going to be closing somewhere around, you know, June 3rd of or June 30th of 2023. I can't remember, but it's in summer of 2023. And I guess we'll see how things progress from there. And even if it falls through, there's nothing wrong with that as well. I think it would just wake everybody up right now because it just seems like, you know, a lot of good games are sleeping in development cycles. And a lot of these companies are in a place where they need to start making some major moves. They really need to start thinking about how they can leverage what is already available and not waste any more time. And I think this ties into other conversations that we probably need to have in a separate video. But I wanted to go ahead and just share my thoughts on this and do a little bit of that retrospective to point to the fact that it was very possible for Microsoft to have bought like what, uh, 10 or 12 of Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment with the fee that they've paid so far for Activision Blizzard. It's not even a, you know, uh, it's not even a contest at this point. But again, we'll see how things shape out. Hopefully this will inspire or at least jug Warner Brothers to kind of get themselves out there and leverage all of what's going on right now and probably position themselves in a way that this game is going to get more eyes and be more successful. All right, that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching the video. I appreciate you guys' time and audience. Hopefully we'll talk in another one. Peace out.